Okay, good morning class. Today I'm going to be dictating Lit 120 to 150. So uh, this speed building might sound a little familiar. It's uh, a long answer and it's described the after effects of the heart attack. And so you have artery, you have Johnny, Billy, zipper, spina bifida, you have paralyzed, piddling, cosmetic, cat, you have gag, razor, and oxygen. So artery is going to be written artery, two strokes. You have um, zipper is zip, come back, ER, zipper. You have paralyzed, pair lies, come back, D. Yes, paralyzed, come back D. Piddling is PID and then LG for piddling. Cosmetic is cosmetic, three strokes, cosmetic. And then you've got gag. Razor is razor, two strokes. Oxygen is oxygen, two strokes, okay? And this is gonna be the long answer at 120, you all. If I can't work, I'm not worth nothing. That's all there is to it. I'll give you an example that I pressed into my kids. My little boy was about seven years old and he had spina bifida. Do you know what that is? Where his spine almost opens, it's almost closed. They call it a zipper in your spine. And it almost closed, but it left the bottom of his spine open. But he was not paralyzed or nothing. He was just as intelligent and could move. His legs were weak. He was probably the only one in the world that had movement in his legs. So all my kids, all 10 of my kids, Girls, boys, whatever, went to work with me. So he's about five years old, but he's not very strong, and he's in about that much snow. So I took the cat and punched out a little flat place where it would be a little easier standing and walking. And I'm into the snow bank, and the man working for me, he's up hooking up chokers and the cable. And my little boy's face is just getting redder and redder. Finally, I got off the cat and I said, Billy, what's the matter? And this is my feelings exactly. And this kid's only five years old. He said, Dad, working men is supposed to work. They don't stand around. Now, that's the way I feel about it. And I don't come up to somebody that's working and just stand there and visit with them. I jump in and help them if I can or whatever's going on. And I've always been that way. And now I can't do that. Jeez, like yesterday. I tried to change the oil in my pickup. About all I could do was drain the oil and go in the house for about a half hour and then come out and put a new filter on it and oil in it. And I was dead. It fills up in here. That's how solid it feels in here with any amount of exercise. And not a one of these doctors have recommended that I walk one block until after this 90 day period is up. So I don't know what they've got in the back of their minds, but you hear about everybody that has a heart attack and they get them up and then get them walking right away. But I had the worst possible heart attack you could have. See, 
Your heart is like this, like a can of worms. That's what it looks like. I didn't have one of these clothes off. I didn't have one of those clothes off. I had this clothes off right here, the main artery going to the left side of my heart, which is the biggest muscle of your heart. And that muscle was without oxygen and blood for over four hours. And another thing that nobody has mentioned here, and I'm not worried about it because I don't worry about my cosmetic appearance. I have not been able to wear my teeth since my accident. I have a gag factor like you can't believe since that accident. When it got injured back here, the gag department of your brain is at the base of your brain. It injured that somehow. And when I put my teeth in, twice I almost gagged to death before I got them out. And I'm just not going to come here and sit in front of you and gag on my teeth and maybe even have to throw up. Oh, yeah. And so you have um, supposed is S P long O Z supposed supposed come back D. You have um, visit is vit V I T. You've got movement. I think you can write one stroke. No. Yes, long U. You have yesterday Y E D. Pick up is P U P with an asterisk. Pick up P U P asterisk. You have recommended, R-E-M-D, come back D. R-E-M-D, come back D. Heart, H-A-E-R-T, heart, H-A-R-T, okay? And this is gonna be at 1.30, you all. If I can't work, I'm not worth nothing. That's all there is to it. I'll give you an example that I pressed into my kids. My little boy was about seven years old and he had spina bifida. Do you know what that is? Where his spine almost opens, it's almost closed, but it left the bottom of his spine open. But he was not paralyzed or anything. He was just as intelligent and could move. His legs were weak. He was probably the only one in the world that had movement in his legs. So all my kids, all 10 of my kids, girls, boys, whatever, went to work with me. So he's about five years old, but He's not very strong and he's in about that much snow. So I took the cat and punched out a little flat place where it would be a little easier standing and walking. And I'm into the snowbank. And the man working for me, he's up hooking up chokers and the cable. And my little boy's face is just getting redder and redder. Finally, I got off the cat and I said, Billy, what's the matter? And this is my feelings exactly. And this kid's only five years old. He said, Dad, working men is supposed to work. They don't stand around. Now, that's the way I feel about it. And I don't come up to somebody that's working and just stand there and visit with them. I jump in and help them if I can or whatever's going on. And I've always been that way. And now I can't do that. Geez, like yesterday, I tried to change the oil in my pickup. About all I could do was drain the oil and go in the house for about a half hour, and then come out and put a new filter on it, and oil in it. And I was dead. It fills up in here. That's how solid it feels in here 
with any amount of exercise. And not a one of these doctors have recommended that I walk one block until after this 90 day period is up. So I don't know what they've got in the back of their minds. But you hear about everybody that has a heart attack and they get them up and get them walking right away. But I had the worst possible heart attack you could have. See, your heart is like this, like a can of worms. That's what it looks like. I didn't have one of these clothes off. I didn't have one of those clothes off. I had this clothes off right here, the main artery going to the left side of my heart, which is the biggest muscle of your heart. And that muscle was without oxygen and blood for over four hours. And another thing that nobody has mentioned here and I'm not worried about it because I don't worry about my cosmetic appearance. I have not been able to wear my teeth since my accident. I have a gag factor like you can't believe since that accident. When it got injured back here, the gag department of your brain is at the base of your brain. It injured that somehow. And when I put my teeth in, Twice I almost gagged to death before I got them out. And I'm just not gonna come here and sit in front of you and gag on my teeth and maybe even have to throw up. Oh yeah, I can't use my electric razor on my neck because it starts those nerves and stuff. And I get muscle spasms in my neck and it hurts so much that it's just unbelievable. So I don't use my electric razor. Oh God, I went fishing the other day. My boys caught the fish and I sat there. They made, and so let's write some of these words. You have muscle is M-U-S, come back L, muscle. You have spasm, S-P-A-F-M. Yeah, is Y-A-E with an asterisk, yeah. You've got um, injure is J-U-R, come back D. J long U-R, come back D. Or actually, I think it's just J-R, no? So I'm gonna write injure, come back D. Okay. You've got um, what else? I'm not seeing anything. Okay, so this is going to be oh, intelligent. Can you write? I don't know why you couldn't write like that. Intelligent. I don't know why you can't write in one, one stroke. This is going to be oh, and I'm saying cat, and it's just capitalized C A T with the. Um, capitalized, okay? This is at 140. If I can't work, I'm not worth nothing. That's all there is to it. I'll give you an example that I pressed into my kids. My little boy was about seven years old and he had spina bifida. Do you know what that is? where his spine almost opens, it's almost closed. They call it a zipper in your spine. And it almost closed, but it left the bottom of his spine open. But he was not paralyzed or nothing. He was just as intelligent and could move. His legs were weak. He was probably the only one in the world that had movement in his legs. So all my kids, all 10 of my kids, girls, boys, whatever, went to work with me. So he's about five years old, but he's not very strong and he's in about, about that much snow. So I took the cat and punched out a little flat place where it would be a little easier standing and walking. And I'm into the snowbank and the man working for me 
he's up hooking up chokers and the cable. And my little boy's face is just getting redder and redder. Finally, I got off the cat and I said, Billy, what's the matter? And this is my feelings exactly. And this kid's only five years old. He said, Dad, working men is supposed to work. They don't stand around. Now, that's the way I feel about it. And I don't come up to somebody that's working and just stand there and visit with them. I jump in and help them if I can, or whatever's going on. And I've always been that way. And now I can't do that. Geez, like yesterday, I tried to change the oil in my pickup. About all I could do was drain the oil and go in the house for about a half hour and then come out and put a new filter on it and oil in it and I was dead. It fills up in here. That's how solid it fills in here with any amount of exercise. And not a one of these doctors have recommended that I walk one block until after this 90 day period is up. So I don't know what they've got in the back of their minds. But you hear about everybody that has a heart attack and they get them up and get them walking right away. But I had the worst possible heart attack you could have. See, your heart is like this, like a can of worms. That's what it looks like. I didn't have one of these clothes off. I didn't have one of those clothes off. I had this clothes off right here, the main artery going to the left side of my heart, which is the biggest muscle of your heart. And that muscle was without oxygen and blood for over four hours. And another thing that nobody has mentioned here. And I'm not worried about it because I don't worry about my cosmetic appearance. I have not been able to wear my teeth since my accident. I have a gag factor like you can't believe since that accident. When it got injured back here, the gag department of your brain is at the base of your brain. It injured that somehow. And when I put my teeth in twice, I almost gagged to death before I got them out. And I'm just not going to come here and sit in front of you and gag on my teeth and maybe even have to throw up. Oh yeah, I can't use my electric razor on my neck because it starts those nerves and stuff. And I get muscle spasms in my neck and it hurts so much that it's just unbelievable. So I don't use my electric razor. Oh God, I went fishing the other day. My boys caught the fish and I sat there. They made me look like a fool. I don't know why I'm going fishing. When I started working, you could eat off of my garage floor. And after I got into that work, I didn't have time for that piddling kind of stuff. And so we have um, unbelievable, you can do UN, and then I think you can do believable in one stroke. B L long E V B L. Okay. You've got mm, department is DPT department. Don't forget um, appearance is A appearance P long E R N S. You have cable is one stroke. And this is going to be punch, P-U-F-R-P-B, F-R-P-B-L-G, okay? This is going to be at 150. If I can't work, I'm not worth nothing. That's all there is to it. I'll give you an example that I pressed into my kids. My little boy was about seven years old and he had spina bifida. Do you know what that is? Where his spine almost opens, it's almost closed. They call it a zipper in your spine. 
and it almost closed, but it left the bottom of his spine open. But he was not paralyzed or nothing. He was just as intelligent and could move his legs, were weak. He was probably the only one in the world that had movement in his legs. So all my kids, all 10 of my kids, girls, boys, whatever, went to work with me. So he's about five years old and he's not very strong and he's in about that much snow. So I took the cat and punched out a little flat place where it would be a little easier standing and walking. And I'm into the snow bank and the man working for me, he's up hooking chokers and the cable. And my little boy's face is just getting redder and redder. Finally, I got off the cat and I said, Billy, what's the matter? And this is my feelings exactly. And this kid's only five years old. He said, Dad, working men is supposed to work. They don't stand around. Now, that's the way I feel about it. And I don't come up to somebody that's working and just stand there and visit with them. I jump in and help them if I can or whatever's going on. And I've always been that way. And now I can't do that. Geez, like yesterday, I tried to change the oil in my pickup. About all I could do was drain the oil and go in the house for about a half hour and then come out and put a new filter on it. And I was dead. It fills up in here. That's how solid it feels in here with any amount of exercise. And not a one of these doctors have recommended that I walk one block until after this 90 day period is up. So I don't know what they've got in the back of their minds. But you hear about everybody that has a heart attack and they get them up and get them walking right away. But I had the worst possible heart attack you could have. See, your heart is like this, like a can of worms. That's what it looks like. I didn't have one of these clothes off. I didn't have one of those clothes off. I had this clothes off right here. The main artery going to the left side of my heart, which is the biggest muscle of your heart. And that muscle was without oxygen and blood for over four hours. And another thing that nobody has mentioned here. And I'm not worried about it because I don't worry about my cosmetic appearance. I have not been able to wear my teeth since my accident. I have a gag factor like you can't believe since that accident. When you got injured back here, the gag department of your brain is at the base of your brain. It injured that somehow. And when I put my teeth in, twice I almost gagged to death before I got them out. And I'm just not going to come here and sit in front of you and gag on my teeth and maybe even have to throw up. Oh, yeah, I can't use my electric razor on my neck because it starts those nerves and stuff and I get muscle spasms in my neck. And it hurts so much that it's just unbelievable. So I don't use my electric razor. Oh God, I went fishing the other day. My boys caught the fish and I sat there. They made me look like a fool. I don't know why I'm going fishing. When I started working, you could eat off my garage floor. And after I got into that work, I didn't have time for that piddling kind of stuff. My garage got so that I had to put my hard hat on before I could go in. What I mean, you put in 13, 14 hours, and I'm not bragging because almost every day was a 14 hour day. She has held a light for me at midnight so I could tune my truck up so I could go and let me just, I think midnight is in my, no, let me look at midnight and then we'll get ready for your test, okay? We'll start off with your 140s. Let me just find midnight, this M.
long i and t minus okay m long i and t we'll get ready for your test you all and so we have on your test number one 140 proper names you have west avenue and 8th street remember what avenue is just a v okay a v and um, it's a long answer so let me expand my screen and so the question is start with the automobile accident and tell us what happened that day and this is going to be 140 lit number one for five minutes you all I was stopped at the stop sign at the shopping center on the west side, just south of West Avenue and waiting. And traffic was not very heavy, but there was one car coming. And so I didn't pull out because there's four lanes and I was just going to be turning left immediately onto 8th Street which is just a short distance from that exit. And so I was waiting because I was going to have to go across four lanes of traffic to get into the fifth and sixth turn lanes to turn left. A car came up behind me and evidently thought I was going to go because he never ever stopped. He just ran into the back end of me and boom all of a sudden my car just bumped clear out into the intersection I don't know how far but we went boom you see there's four lanes it wasn't in the first lane it was either in the second or third lane I don't remember which so it wouldn't have been wise for me to pull out because I would have been cutting in front of him, but there wasn't any traffic in front of him. Thank goodness. My daughter was in the back seat on the right, so that would be behind the passenger side. My husband was in the passenger side on the front, and we all had our seatbelts on. I tell you, it was a very surprising jolt. I wasn't expecting it, so I wasn't braced or anything, and I lurched forward and hit the steering wheel and then just like snapped back. It was a snapping motion like you do with a bullwhip or something, just sort of like cracked me. And the first two things is I was very mad that someone had run into the back end of me sitting at a stop sign. I thought, what on earth? Can't the person see my red car? The second thing, my neck hurt. That is the first thing I felt. Then I felt my lower back below the waist. I didn't see his car behind me until he hit me. Then I looked in my rear view mirror. I saw all of these kids' arms and legs flying around because none of his kids were snapped in. There were at least three children in his car. As I looked back, they were still sort of flapping around and all I saw was a bunch of arms and legs. Just confusion of bodies in the back of his car. I don't remember if it was in back or in front. They were flying everywhere. I couldn't tell. Everybody's arms and legs were up in the air, and that's all I noticed at that point because I looked immediately into my rearview mirror because I was startled. My daughter looked back so she saw it was going to happen. So here is the car. It's facing you. It's turned this way so she looked back and she saw him as he hit us. She didn't have time to warn me. I don't know what I could have done. My husband didn't see the car. He was looking forward out the windshield. Actually, he was looking to see if the road was clear. He always helps me look. My daughter, 
she saw him approaching and she thought he's not going to stop and just you know just boom it happened she said she doesn't know why she turned to look at that instant you know sometimes you have a feeling something is going to happen and she turned to look and bam there he was just within an instant after she looked back she said he didn't stop before he hit us and i'm sure he didn't because the traffic was light it was only that one car and it was far enough over that i could have pulled out and turned to the right had i just been going to go into one lane and proceed straight but i was going to have to do a four lane cross like i said there's not a lot of distance between that entrance onto west okay and we have your second 140 lit it says no proper names let me check also a long answer and i don't see oh self-defense hyphenate self-defense okay self-defense question is tell us about your abduction and assault this will be 140 lit number two for five minutes well i ran out of gas so a truck driver took me to the gas station there was a woman kind of on the right side of the station who was having car trouble i asked her if it would be possible for her to give me a ride home and she said she didn't know how long that it would be she said these guys over there have been real nice why don't you ask them they followed me off the highway they have been helping me with my car she said they are real nice i am sure they would help you so i asked them one of them said after we get finished putting water in her radiator we will help you take gas back to your car well we left the gas station and i was giving them directions back to my car and the one in the passenger side said, I smell gas leaking. He bent down supposedly to smell the gas. Then he pulled out a pipe and hit me on the head. He kept hitting me on the head. I started screaming, but he kept hitting me. He was hitting me all over my head. Then I remember hearing him push back or something behind the driver's seat and he started choking me while he just kept beating me. And I tried to sit up to look for street signs to see where I was and he wouldn't let me. I even said, if they'd let me go, I'd give them my money. And he said, no way, he just kept beating me. And the driver was giving him instructions and he kept telling him, put her out put her out in other words knock her out and the other guy kept saying wait till we get there wait till we get there so in the meantime i started kicking and scratching kicking him in his face and scratching his eyes and i said please let me go let me go and they wouldn't let me go and they would not stop fighting. I said, will you let me go? And he said, no. And so of course I continued to fight. And I know that I was semi-conscious at least once or twice because when I kept coming to, I couldn't hear real clearly, but I knew that I was alive. And you know, I kept saying, let me go. Then they kept saying, stop fighting. And I said, will you let me go? And the driver said, no. He said, you are going to get messed up and we are not going to let you go after we mess with you either. And I heard the driver say, shoot her, 
I don't care. I didn't see a gun, but a little while later, the passenger, the one who had been beating me, got a knife that he held on me. When I saw the knife, I just started to think clearly. I remembered that I had my chemical spray in my pocket and the pocket was open because the zipper was broken. So I put my hand in my pocket. See, when he grabbed the knife from the driver, he let one of my hands go, one of my arms go. So I could grab out this spray and I sprayed him in the eyes. Well, I just kept spraying him for a while and he tried to turn it on me. And I remembered in self-defense class, the teacher told us that they might try to do that. He did get some of it on my face, but I turned it back on him again and just kept spraying him in the eyes. And when the driver saw what was going on, he said, throw the bitch out. Somehow I got out, but I don't remember if I jumped out or if they pushed me out. I don't remember if the vehicle stopped or not. I don't know. I was suddenly out in a real desolate area like a big field. I had one shoe on, but I didn't have my glasses. They kept... And we'll get ready for your 120s. One twenty number one. Proper names: Dennis, Tony, Kevin, and Mr. Brown. That's also a long answer. So we have the question: What do you remember about the night you were shot in the grocery store? And this is one twenty lit number one for five minutes. You all. At the time of this incident, I was working nights from 10 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. We stock shelves at night. There are less customers in the store and we complete most of our stocking duties at night. That was what I was doing. The store is actually open for business 24 hours a day. There was a number of us employees in, just about most of us that were stocking that night, I think. There was probably six or seven of us who were stocking that night. We were now in aisle 13 stocking. I believe it was about 3.15 in the morning. The store wasn't busy at this time. Dennis was stalking with me in there and Tony was in there. Those two were right next to me. I believe Kevin was in the aisle also. So that was four of us. There was a couple of other employees down at the end of the aisle. We were approximately in the middle of the aisle. It was a typical evening. We talked back and forth. It was business as usual. I was stalking and working and I believe Tony and Dennis were to my left, I believe. And I looked up and saw Mr. Brown down at the end of the aisle. I knew he was there to rob us. In a split second, I turned around and proceeded to exit the end of the aisle. There was boxes in the aisle. I had to kind of jump and get over them. But I had been in two previous armed robberies and this was the third armed robbery that I have been in. And I just said, I'm not going to stand here and get shot. I just left. I ran as fast as I could out the end of the aisle. 
I had not seen Mr. Brown's face because it was covered with a ski mask. I don't remember the type of clothes that he had on. I turned around and saw him for a split second. All I basically saw was the gun up to a fellow employee's neck or face and the ski mask in a split second that's all i saw i was probably about 40 feet from him i don't know how much i wanted to get far away from him right then my intent was to get out of there as quickly as i possibly could that was my thinking not to stand there and get shot i turned around and left the aisle just as soon as I possibly could. I probably took possibly two steps or maybe three, and I was hit in the back. I was shot in the back, but I continued on. As far as I remember, I didn't miss a step. My adrenaline was flowing real good, and I kept going and ran into the back room. When I was hit, it was something that I have never experienced before. And adrenaline was flowing so fast, it felt like someone smacked me as hard as they could on the backside with a two by four. I was shot about in the middle of the back, right next to the spine. Next, I tried to convince myself no, I really didn't get shot. But a second later, I put my hand here on my groin and could feel it expanding. I said, I did get shot, but I kept going. I kept running as fast as I could. Luckily, the bullet took a path. It didn't hit any bones, major nerves, arteries, and it almost exited, but it didn't. And then we have your 120 lit number two, H Road Culverts CO, begrudgingly, the Forest Service, notice to shut down, and Oregon. Also a long answer, the question is, why don't you tell me why you think the Forest Service shut down your road contract? And this is gonna be 120 lit number two for five minutes. It was the inspectors. Gosh, I can't tell you the amount of times they came out. Sometimes it would go for a week and you wouldn't see them. You know, it was just kind of a pop-in type situation. The very first problem with them came in with the plan specifications. The road was to be an H road. It was a dry road to be constructed with no culverts, just a cow trail through the brush. We got into it maybe a hundred yards and we hit a spring. We got into it about another 100 feet beyond that. And we had pretty near a river. And we went into it a little more and we had another one. Within the first three quarters of a mile where this was put out as a road with no culverts, no ditches, no nothing. Within the first half a mile, I could see where we were going to need eight to 10 culverts. As it wound up on that H road, there was over 20 culverts that had to be put in for springs. It was no good. I mean it. Their engineering studies didn't show that. Wasn't even bid items. As soon as we hit the water, the contract says, if you have 
a differing site condition, you contact the CO, contracting officer, and advise him of it. This was done. This immediately set off a fireworks to think that I would show them where the water was. Begrudgingly, the first change order said that I could put in five culverts at my own expense and no increase in time. When we were shut down, the springs was all flowing so much water that it was like a bog throughout the area that we were supposed to be building the dry road in. This is why we were shut down in January. The Forest Service comes out with this piece of paper, notice to shut down. Everything is done on a piece of paper. I suppose it's a shuffling type business and all they have to do is come out and they'll give you a piece of paper similar to the one laying on your desk with suspension and they just shut you down. This just came out of the blue that I had no idea that they were going to shut me down. I was working when they came out and I intended to continue working. When you have so much time to do a job, you got to work. No time is to be charged against the job in certain periods of the year. The idea of working in the winter time is to do all the work that you can. Like log the right of way and go back when the material is dry enough to put into the fills and whatnot. When the weather dries out. You are not charged time during the winter months, or they can charge you part-time. They didn't want me to be up there during the winter. I mean, they didn't want me to be there. We were the last people working in there. There were other people that logged in different areas, you know, and they were being moved out to Oregon. They wanted to deny me access. And that's what they did. They shut down the main road so that we couldn't work. We couldn't move out equipment or nothing. That's how they did it. We were harassed from day one on that job. Everything we tried to do, we were harassed. The access to, okay, you all, so that's it. That concludes your tests. You had some very good tests. Type them up, we're at the seventh week. So um, halfway point, a little less than that. So make sure that you all are accessing this, typing them up. They were very good. Have a great day, you all.